looks like we got some more specifics regarding Robert Downey Jr.'s return to the MCU. Obviously, the big reveal, Robert Downey Jr. coming back to play Victor Von Doom, Dr. Doom, in the next big Avengers movies. And a lot of hype surrounded it, but also a lot of people questioning whether that is quite the right thing to do, whether I want to see Robert Downey Jr., their most iconic hero, play one of the most iconic villains. Uh, but it is happening, and he's going to get paid Big time. Robert Downey Jr. will reportedly be paid $100 million. Oh, it's going up. Like <laughs> Dr. Doom in Avengers Doomsday and Avengers Secret Wars. He says Kevin Feige approached him the role about a year ago. Yep. I looked into the character and went, wow. I think he looked at $100 million and also went, wow. Yeah, I, I, yeah he misspelled paycheck. <laughs> so I looked at the paycheck and went, wow. <laughs> that yeah, dude. A lot of money. Uh, now it is for two movies. Now, it also says it could be up to double that if they hit some box office incentives. So potentially $200 million to appear in these two movies. I am fully in the camp of, you know what? If, like, the market is the market. Same with baseball players and, you know, football players and things like this. Uh, where a guy, he might be the eighth best quarterback in the league, but because of quarterback contracts and the way they're set up, he ends up getting $53 million a year. And it's like, hey, that's what people are willing to pay. There is no one other than Robert Downey Jr. in the MCU. He is the star of the MCU. And if these movies pay off, uh, they're going to be glad whatever they paid him to actually get him back. Um, but the question is, is it going to pay off? That's the question. It's a big risk. I was told that uh, this decision freaked Kevin Feige out a little bit, but that was his motivation to do it. And yes, it did happen a year ago. They went to some great lengths to have this private meeting. I've mentioned him on another super, another stream. I don't know if I should here, but um, they went to yeah. some great lengths to make this private away from their own people. So just Feige and RDJ could meet and talk yeah, about this, this. Wasn't hey, come down to my office and let's have a discussion. Yeah. This was hey, we're gonna like get this house and we're not gonna tell anybody we're doing this. So let's just have a discussion about this stuff. It here. was very congest can clang. Destine, I can say it. And uh, yeah, he said yes when this, because Kevin Feige, the meeting was just adding zeros and then waiting for RDJ to nod. And uh, he nodded at, I guess, 100 million. He's absolutely worth it. Like, Ryan, I'm I, like, I've, I'm all for this. Like, get as much, get that money because RDJ is off a Academy Award win. So he's got a little momentum, but he also means everything to the MCU and they can't bring Tony back, which they should, by the way, but they should recast him. That's a, that's a story for another day. So um, to all the little, and I'm talking about content creators out there, not you lovely people in the chat or even fans who may disagree with me, all you little fucking twats out there who were saying, Marvel is successful. You have been just lying about the box office numbers when they don't even know basics of the box office numbers, like how much the studios actually make from foreign ticket sales or from domestic ticket sales. It's not, it's not 100%, you fucking idiots. Uh, yeah. So I just want to point out that if the MCU was healthy, would they be paying Robert Downey Jr. $100 million to come back? No, they are fucking desperate. They needed a change, and they have an opportunity to do it. They have a, a fellow subsidiary right there in-house called Lucasfilm, and they are watching them trip all over themselves. And by the way, no love, no love between Lucasfilm and Marvel. There's no love. They don't like each other at all. They were friendly at one time. Now they're not. That's a story for another day. But, um, <laughs> oh, it's a good one, too. But, yeah, th like, they see all this fucking up going on, and they're like, well, we are the biggest franchise in Hollywood right now that still has some life. There's a heartbeat in there. It's fading, but there's a heartbeat in there, and we need to turn it around now, and they need to do the quickest thing possible, stop the bleeding, and they do that by, hey, we got to release some of the shit not as much as DC, but we got to release some of the shit that we got to release. And then we're going to uh, try to, uh, th this will, by the way, they will be engineering a soft reboot. This Now that's just purely my speculation, but that's where they're headed with Secret Wars. They're engineering a, a soft reboot and they'll probably bring back Thor, Iron Man, Captain America, the real one, you know, the Steve Rogers one, probably recast at some point. That's the only way it's going to work. You can't, if it's they felt, it kind of makes sense going forward. Yeah. Period. If they felt strongly about America Chavez and uh, the Scarlet Scarab and uh, and the Kate task, Bishop, Kate and, Bishop yeah. and the Taskmasters, they wouldn't have done this. They would have gone full steam ahead with what they're doing. Back to RDJ, like it's he absolutely 
earned the he's already earned this hundred million with being part of uh Kevin Feige just went out on in Hall H and, and said how much like uh, the, the MCU has earned or, or has generated thirty two billion dollars just in the films. Yeah, doesn't mean that that's profit. It's but not profit. That is the obviously the most lucrative film franchise we've ever seen in history by a long shot. Um, what I think is very interesting about this is. He says Kevin Feige approached him about a role about a year ago. Now, uh, if I go back in my head and think about what was happening about a year ago, oh, that's right. Jonathan ago. Majors was on trial. Yep. Um, Jonathan Majors was on trial after the incident that occurred. And then he, I think he was found guilty at the beginning of December. That's what about a year ago is. So that may have been one of the things that pushed this to happen the way that it did. Mm -hmm. Um. I have zero issues with Robert Downey Jr. getting paid $100 million. Um, you do have to make sure that you make that back. But um, to you look at uh, you know some of the insane paydays that people like, say, Tom Cruise have gotten. Now, Tom Cruise got insane payday from Top Gun Maverick primarily because of the back-end box office stuff and went on to make $1.5 billion. And so he ended up making over $100 mil from that from just that movie alone. Uh, I do think there's a little difference from the upfront pay guarantee of 100 million versus doing that after it hits a bunch of incentives. But still, you know, money is money. You know, we'll see. I, I have no sincere belief that this is just going to be fantastic and incredible. And I think they, in some ways, they've made itself a little bit more difficult for themselves by including mm -hmm. a guy like Robert Downey Jr. to have him play this villain. But the one thing that they desperately needed was for people to care about the future of the MCU. Yes. And they did achieve that to some point just with this announcement. So they, they did. Uh, but it, with no concern of legacy, this like, yes. which it's obvious that they're not even thinking about it. They're so worried about the next few quarters that, that that's, that was their only concern. And then we'll worry about it later. It's not how you create art and uh, popular entertainment, serialized entertainment. They went off the path. They went off the path and it's not going to be that easy to get back on. We'll see. I hope, I hope it's great. I hope it's fucking fantastic.